Hello and welcome back to the Long Island Railroad One Talk branch. Except we are still over in the basement looking at the Pennsylvania Railroad Grantville Spur. Last time we did some regular switching using a card based system. Today I want to show you another way to use the cards and this layout. It's called the Ingalls Nook Switching Puzzle, with which many of you are probably familiar. There is a great description of it at the link above, and I'll also include the link in the description for this video below. Now I know that some people shy away from including switching puzzles on their layouts, and in general I agree. But the Inglenook puzzle is so simple as to practically not be a puzzle. But its simplicity is deceptive. With just two switches and a few feet of track and a few simple rules, hours of entertainment can be had. And anyway, what is switching but puzzle solving with trains? I think that's why we all like it in the first place. So how does the Inglenook puzzle work? Let's take a look at my layout. Here's a photo of the track plan, straight off the fascia. Now let's clean that up a little bit by removing all the extraneous words and things. Now watch. Hidden right here is the Inglenook track plan, in red. Now let's get rid of the unused track and examine the simple but elegant design. The rules for the puzzle states that you start with eight cars. Five on the main, where it says five cars, and three on one of the sidings. It doesn't matter which one. Now you know from the last video, if you've watched it, that I have cards for each car. So it is a simple matter of taking the eight cards and randomly drawing five of them. Place them down in a line, and your goal is to build that train with the cars in order as drawn in the area marked five cars. Simple. Hmm, maybe. So let's get started. I hope that uh, brief introduction to the Inglenook switching puzzle didn't go by too quickly. Uh, if you don't understand it or want some questions answered, please go look at that website. It's quite informative. It tells you everything you need to know. So I have uh, the eight cards for the eight cars right here in front of me. And you can see the cars are all set up randomly back there on the puzzle tracks. Uh, I've put down a couple of uh, blocks so that I don't overstep my limits. Now I'm going to take the eight cards, shuffle them up. You can see I'm doing this live. It's not, uh, I haven't set it up in any way. I sure hope it turns out to be a good puzzle. But now we're going to lay them out. Let's take the first five. So UC UCOX, a New Haven boxcar. The other New Haven box car, the ROPX tank car, and finally the New York City tank car. So those are our five cars. Okay, we'll get started moving the cars. Now you may notice, actually you probably didn't, but anyway, uh, the New Haven box car was acting very badly. It lost an axle, so I replaced it with this Pennsylvania Railroad car. So it's back in the corner there on timeout. And so we'll use this car instead. So I lost a couple minutes of video, so I'm just going to start over. So here we go. Now you may notice that in the intro I still had the GP7 on the track, but I decided to replace it with this Atlas uh, H1644. Now the first, I know that there's at least one rule for doing angle nook, and the first thing you do is you take all the cars that are need, aren't needed and you move them to an unoccupied siding. So this car, this car, and this car are all going to get moved. Put them on this siding. You don't need them. You just put them there and forget them. It doesn't, not being able to use that siding has no effect on the rest of the operation. I'm also going to knock that apart. That was clever of me. Not going to operate prototypically because it would be boring just moving it really slow. I'm not going to go super fast, but I'm not going to try to pretend like I'm really switching. I'm going to do this relatively quickly. I hope nobody minds. I mean, when you do it yourself, do it however you want. I'm just trying to demonstrate this and not bore people too badly or more than usual. All right, that's that car out of the way. Now that we're going to get to this car.
Ah. I guess this car has problems too. Never noticed it having problems before. Come on. Now, well, oh, this is actually going to be kind of tricky. Oh, no, well, never mind. I'll just take these two cars, park them back on the other siding, and then go get that car. In case you're wondering, I operate, well, almost all the switches on this table have uh, wires embedded in the foam. So from the knobs to the, the switch is how I, I can switch my switches remotely. It's an okay method, but I'd rather use the Blue Point switch machines. It's certainly cheaper but it requires digging a trench in the foam and then filling the trench back in. And, and uh, it, it's, the wires can't be too long, otherwise it's too flexible and it doesn't work very well. Blue point switch machines are much more positive. And I like them. I mean, as long as you're not buying a thousand of them, they're worth the expense. Okay, West India Fruit Company. This is actually going to be pretty easy, I think. Oh yeah, this is going, this one's going to be way easy. I should do a different one. Because all I have to do... Well, eh, it's going to be somewhat easy. I just need to get number five out of the way. And I can park him right here with these guys. And then I'll park one and two there, and then all I have to do is pull three, four, and five out. Yeah, that's going to be super easy. In fact, I may just, uh, well, I'll keep doing this one, and then maybe I'll do another one as a, a bonus. Since I've already gone to so much effort. In fact, you really couldn't ask for an easier angle nook puzzle.
There it goes again. In the exact same place, too. Hmm, I wonder if there's something in the track. And there we go. One, two, three, four, five. That's how you do it. Yeah, I'm going to do another one. I'm going to replace this car since it seems to be giving me problems as well. So, see you in a minute. Okay, we're back. I've gone ahead and dealt out the cards again, and this is the new arrangement. So, once again, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take all the unused cars, these three, and put them on the siding over there. So we will start. Switch that right. Start by putting this the city service car on that track. And this particular one looks like it's going to be a little bit more difficult than the last one. So this might take a few more minutes. So, if you've seen all you need to see while watching the first one, then go ahead and go watch a cat video. Otherwise, hang around. Who knows, maybe you'll see something special. I doubt it, but you never know. Okay. Oh, come on. There we go. There is one. Now we'll grab the Pennsylvania car. Oh, no, we can't. We've got too many cars in the way. So first, we will take these two cars and put them away on this spur. Now we can put that car on the far spur. Now we will take the number two car and park it here. That way we'll have enough room to get the last unneeded car and put it on the unneeded car track. Oops, ran into the Southern Pacific uh, container tr truck back there. Oh well. I suppose it's not a truck, it's just a trailer.
Okay. Can I do this without being able to see what I'm doing? Probably not. There we go. Okay, now. All the unneeded cars are on the far spur, right here. And now we have to try to figure out how we're going to arrange Get the cars in order. All right, first. We're gonna take the number two car and put it up here. Actually, we're going to put, uh, let's see now. Yes, we have to put both the number two and the number four car there. Take the number one car and put it there. Ah, the element. figures that the one switch, the most popular switch on the layout, is also the one most likely to cause the cars to derail. Figures. Good old Atlas custom line switches. Okay, now that number one car is here, We're going to take three and five and park them back here. thinking what to do. Do I want to put the number two car here or do I want to put the number four car here? So I can take the number one car. Why is this so oh brain work I think I want to put the number two car there but I oh golly
כן. So now I'm going to take the one and four car and leave them on this track. Yes, I know what to do now. I will take the two car, put it behind the number one car, and then grab all three of them and put the number four car where the number two car is. And that way number one and number two will both be in the right spot. And then I just have to get three and four, well, and five, sorted out. Which shouldn't be too hard. In fact, it will be easy, yay! Number four parked. So we'll get number one and two parked, then we just need to grab three and four, and park, tack them onto one and two, and then grab number five, and we are done. In fact, there's really no reason for me to go on other than getting the whole thing done. It's all over but the shouting now. Coach has put in the third stringers, mopping up. Victory is assured. They're in the victory ce celebration formation. Running the time off the clock. And we got this one. Five, four, three, two, one. Hurry up, car. And there we go. We're done. All in a line, all in a row. Ready to go. And let's just drive off into the sunset with the train. Well, there you have it. That's the Engel Nook siding. It's, it's a lot of fun. It really is. I encourage you to build one into your layout or just build a, a small layout. As you can see, it doesn't take a lot of space. It takes an HO scale to, and you're using 40 foot cars. And, uh, you know, um, early 
locomotive. I, you could use a switcher or you know, like a GE 44 or 45 ton. To say a little rim, but it takes about six feet lengthwise and a, a foot, maybe 18 inches, depending on what you want to do that way. And you got it. Make yourself a little layout, take it to a train show, get the audience involved. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time on the Long Island Railroad Montauk branch, branch slash the Pennsylvania Railroad Grantville Spur. Bye.